Okay, uh, we'll move to the next uh, each time, uh, item on the agenda, which is Plenary Lecture 1, which will be delivered by Dr. Charles Swanton from the Francis Crick Institute, titled Tumor Heterogeneity and Evolution in Breast Cancer. Uh, Dr. Swanton obtained his MD and PhD in the Imperial Cancer Research Fund Laboratories and Cancer Research UK. He's a thoracic oncologist and physician scientist and the senior principal investigator of the Cancer Evolution and Genome Instability Laboratory and deputy director of the Francis Crick Institute. His group has contributed with these seminal papers in the evolutionary history of solid tumors and how that impacts chromosomal instability, mutational rates, and the uh, ability that bypass the immune system. He's a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and the Academy of Medical Sciences. He has awarded the Napier Professorship in Cancer by the Royal Society, and he's an elected fellow of the Royal Society, as well as a fellow of the American uh, Academy of the American Association for Cancer Research in 2020. He received the Ellison Cliff Medal from the Royal Society of Medicine, as well as the Memorial Sloan Kettering Paul Marks Prize for Cancer Research in 2021, and many other awards. Can the title of his lecture? is Tumor Heterogeneity and Evolution in Breast Cancer. Please let's welcome Dr. Swanton to the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlos, for the kind introduction and for inviting me to this wonderful symposium. So I'm going to talk today about work from um, us in collaboration with our French colleagues on breast cancer evolution, immune evasion, uh, and metastasis driven by chromosomal instability. Here are my disclosures. None is relevant to this presentation. So the background um, of our work is in 2012, we published this paper showing uh, the diversity and branched evolution of uh, an advanced stage renal cancers, showing that multi-region tumor sequencing um, led to the sort of discovery of several core um, evolutionary principles, building on the work of uh, many seminal papers in the field, which I'll discuss in a minute. The first is that there are trunk and branch driver events. In this case, you have trunk mutations present in every tumor cell and branch mutations present in some cells but not others. And no two tumor regions, when you biopsy them and subject them to tumor sequencing, whole genome or exome or otherwise, are identical. No two tumor regions are identical, and there's evidence of subclonal diversification um, and branched evolution at a whole tumor level. We see evidence of parallel evolution of subclonal driver events, that is, driver events um, that occur in tumor suppressor genes, such as SETD2, for example, that are subject to distinct mutations in different regions of the tumor. And we see whole genome doubling events, where the whole genome literally doubles, and that drives chromosomal instability, diversification, upon which natural selection acts. And then distinct clones seed metastasis with complex chromosomal rearrangements, as you can see here, from a primary region four of the tumor that's doubled its genome that sees distinct metastatic sites driving further chromosomal instability. Now, the important thing to say is this, this we were, it, to coin um, the common phrase, we were standing on shoulders of giants, many people before us. Um, had shown um, really an elegant work and typified by Fraser Simmons' work in 1995, the branched evolution trajectories of tumors, as Peter Knoll and Nelly Poliak, Nick Navin, and others had also shown. But in this paper, really with an elegant DNA indices, Fraser had shown that clones identified the metastases reflect clones identified in primary tumors. An individual primary tumor can seed multiple metastatic clones. And there are extensive shifts in DNA content across metastatic subclones, alluding to this important role of chromosomal instability I'll discuss today. And truncal events, like HER2 amplification, are maintained in the metastasis, and there's extensive proliferation heterogeneity. And simply put, the tools we've got nowadays allow us to elucidate this process in high definition. So on that basis, we set up with colleagues Monica Arnidas and Christopher Latornu, Fabrice André, Stefan Michels at uh, Gustave Roussy, UniCancer and Institute Curie, the Breast Tracer X study that built on our understanding of cancer evolution from our studies in Lung Tracer X. In this case, Breast Tracer X across 10 sites in France, 175 patients have been recruited with triple negative breast cancer with early stage tumors. And we've got a median of about two regions per tumor. And today, I'm just going to present some early results in the pre-neoadjuvant chemotherapy setting um, of the multi-region sequencing analysis of the primary tumors and how that's given us some insights into immune evasion, clonal evolution. 
So the aims of Breast Tracer X were to understand the impact of chromosomal instability and mutational diversity on drug resistance and relapse, genomic alterations present in residual disease after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and their impact on metastatic disease evolution, and ultimately the prevalence of immune evasion mechanisms. And the scientific work analysis of, these, of this cohort was conducted um, in our group in London by Nena Kanu, Ieva Useti, and Olivia Lucas in collaboration with Monica and Christophe and Fabrice in France. So I just want to give you an overview of what mutational processes occur in breast cancer, um, um, and which I'll refer to throughout this talk. The, the major processes that drive mutations in um, breast cancer and mutational diversity, apobec mutagenesis, this endogenous cytidine deaminase, which acts as an antiviral restrict restriction mechanism, is also prevalent in breast cancer, driving C to G and C to T mutations, and the aging process. Uh, deamination and methylated cytosines that drives a C to T mutation, um, um, mutational signature as cells age. Now, these drive um, truncal mutations, which I'll refer to as clonal or truncal mutations present in every tumor cell, or branch mutations present in some cells but not others. So these are the mutational diversity processes that drive cell to cell variation as the tumor evolves. But the main subject of the talk today is on chromosomal instability, a sort of important and overlooked mechanism of cell-to-cell -cell variation that drives uh, essentially the substrate upon which selection acts. Now, this can be thought of in two ways. Numerical chromosomal instability that relates to um, alterations in chromosome number, or, um, that is, gains or losses of whole chromosomes, or whole genome doubling, which I'll come back to and structural chromosomal instability, which refers to deletions, amplifications, inversions, and translocations. So in part one of the talk, I'm going to talk about intratumor heterogeneity and genome instability in breast tracer X. Then I'm going to talk about underlying drivers of this process of chromosomal instability that are prevalent in breast cancer. And I'm going to finish off and show you how this impacts in terms of the consequences of chromosomal instability in breast cancer evolution. So this is the results of the first 135 patients recruited with triple negative breast cancer into breast tracer X. Remember, this is the pre neoadjuvant chemotherapy cohort. These are the baseline biopsies subject to multi-region sequencing. So what do we take home from this rather complex slide? Well, first of all, 26% of early stage triple negative breast cancers have at least one, have one or more subclonal driver present in the branches. And bear in mind, we're still undersampling these tumors. So I'm sure if we could sample more deeply, we'd find more branch driver mutations. TP53 mutations are almost always a truncal event, and TP53 is crucially important in chromosome instability because it opens the floodgates and allows chromosome instability to ensue. Then we find that there are subclonal driver mutations such as P10, PIK3C8, RB1, and NF1. These are common subclonal drivers. And importantly, there are different routes to generating cancer diversity. So we can see mutational heterogeneity, does not correlate with chromosomal instability. In other words, you can have tumors with very high levels of mutational diversity, but very low levels of chromosomal instability, and vice versa. Tumors with very high levels of chromosomal instability, but very low levels of mutational diversity. So tumors seem to be able to pick and choose, if you like, between mutational diversity and chromosomal instability to allow um, natural selection to occur. And Interestingly and, and worryingly, there's an extensive whole genome doubling in triple negative breast cancer. About 70% of triple negative breast cancers have whole genome doubling events. And 6% have undergone two whole genome doubling events, a clonal and a subclonal event. So when this is simplified, what we see when we compare our triple negative breast cancers to our lung, adeno, and squamous carcinomas, we see about 55% of the triple negative breast cancer genome has been gained or lost in the trunk. Very early on in tumor evolution, about half of the genome is gained or lost prior to the most recent common ancestor diversifying across the tumor. 70% of the tumors undergo a genome doubling event, and then 10% of the genome in the branches is gained or lost, and about 30% of the detectable mutations are in the branches and are therefore subclonal and are diverse. So now let's talk about the drivers of chromosome instability shown here, and I'll go through one at a time. The first is whole genome doubling, which we showed in 2014, work from Sally Dewhurst and Nikki McGranahan when they were undergraduates in the lab, showed that whole genome doubling is a potent mechanism to drive chromosomal instability. Now, what we find is in breast tracer X, I said about nearly 70% of tumors have undergone a genome doubling event, 50% in the trunk and 19% subclon subclonally in the branches, as many as we see in lung tracer X. 
So why does the cell undergo this genome doubling event? And we think this reflects Muller's ratchet. So what is that exactly? Well, it, well, it reflects essentially the ongoing and inexorable loss of chromosomes prior to genome doubling. And when you get a p53 event that allows chromosome instability to instability to ensue. This leads to haploid loss of heterozygosity where you lose chromosomal information as cells divide. So chromosomes are lost as cells divide due to chromosomal instability. And this leads to loss of crucial genomic information from the cell that can hit essential genes required for cell viability. Now you can see the problem ensue as you lose chromosomal information, you only have one copy of the essential gene left over. And if you get a mutation in that essential gene, the cell dies. So as a way around this, what happens is you get selection for whole genome doubling events that doubles the number of essential genes you have so that as cells lose chromosomal information, they still have two copies of the essential gene left so that the cell can withstand a deleterious mutation in one of those two copies and the cell can survive. So whole genome doubling is a route through to a cell tolerating chromosomal instability and the loss of genetic information that allows a cell to remain viable. So with that in mind, we hypothesized that the frequency of whole genome doubling across cancers would correlate with a proportion of the genome that was lost to haploid loss of heterozygosity prior to genome doubling. And that is indeed the case. There's a, there's a correlation here, quite a strong correlation, between the proportion of the genome that's been lost prior to genome doubling and the frequency of which cancers undergo genome doubling, with triple ne negative breast cancer being amongst the highest, with 30% of the triple negative breast cancer genome being lost prior to whole genome doubling, forcing the cell to double its genome and become chromosomally unstable. Another route of chromosome instability is through APABEC activation. We found early on in lung cancer that APABEC mutagenesis is enriched in the branches um, and drives cell-to-cell -cell variation in the context of mutations. This is shown here, we published this back in 2017. But our recent data from Breast Tracer X shows that also subclonal mutations are enriched in an APABEC context in the branches as well. So APABEC mutagenesis drives mutational diversity both in lung cancer and in triple negative breast cancer, driving cell-to-cell -cell variation. Intriguingly, APABEC3 expression increases early on in tumor evolution, from DCIS through to um, invasive ductal carcinomas, and it principally does seem to be APABEC3B that's most commonly overexpressed um, in this disease, and this is work in collaboration with my friend and colleague Reuben Harris over the years. And together with Ruben, over the last five or six years, we've shown that apabec 3 b drives drug escape variants, immune escape variants, driver genes, and replication stress induced genome instability that in, in also drives chromosomal instability shown here. When we induce apabec 3 b in cells, we can increase chromosomal instability, and when we suppress apabec 3 b in cells, we can suppress chromosomal instability. So apabec 3 b is a very potent driver of genome instability because it drives mutations and it drives chromosomal instability. How does it do this? Well, we think it does this through driving DNA replication stress. So replication stress results in DNA double strand breaks, breaks triggers check one kinase activity that induces apabec 3 b And DNA replication stress in breast cancer can occur through loss of tumor suppressor genes like P10 and triple negative breast cancer, or HER2 amplification, HER2 amplified breast cancer, drives replication stress, induces apabec 3 b that in turn drives mutations and chromosomal instability in a feed-forward loop. We also find that homologous recombination repair deficiency is closely correlated with the degree of chromosomal gains and losses we see in the trunks of triple negative breast cancer. So HRD deficiency, we think, contributes to the acquisition of chromosomal gains and losses as tumors evolve. An overlooked but important mechanism of chromosomal instability is this phenomenon of extrachromosomal DNA. What is extrachromosomal DNA? Well, these are these circular structures, very small circular, circular structures of tumor DNA in, 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 within tumor cells. That it, they're about two to five megabases in length. And they often encode oncogenes. And they reside outside of conventional chromosomes, and they lack centromeres. But they can also reintegrate into chromosomes, forming these so-called homogenous staining regions, and can, can provide a potent route through to gene amplification. Now, the critical thing about these extrachromosomal DNAs is because they lack centromeres, they can't be bound to the mitotic spindle. So they are segregated randomly at mitosis. 
And that random segregation of mitosis is non-Darwinian. And it's a very important mechanism of non-Darwinian evolution that leads to very high chromosomal copy number states in HER2 positive, triple negative, and ER positive breast cancer, where you can get, if you look in triple negative breast cancer, hundreds of gene copies as a result of ECDNA driven gene amplification. And this is a very potent source of intratumor heterogeneity. So how frequent are these ECDNAs in breast cancer? The answer is extremely frequent, more frequent than in lung cancer. We see ECDNA may generate focal amplifications in over 40% of HER2 positive breast cancers, 17% of ER positive breast cancers, and in triple negative breast cancer, over a third of tumors have evidence of ECDNA. And these are some of the common oncogenes encoded, obviously, HER2 and HER2 positive breast cancer, um, and MYC, for example, in triple negative breast cancer. Now, here's an example um, of um, an oncogene, HER2, the HER2 oncogene, HER2 positive breast cancer, that's fused in an ECDNA to the MYC long range enhancer. This drives um, very profound expression of HER2, and of course, because it's an ECDNA, you get many, dip, many copies of this ECDNA fragment. So you not only get amplification of the gene, but you get the expression of the gene driven very potently by fusion to this um, 8Q MYC long range enhancer driving expression of uh, the HER2 protein. So what are the consequences of these various um, genomic mechanisms that drive chromosomal instability? What is the outcome, we think, of chromosomal instability once it arises? So let's focus on ECDNA to start with. So we find that ECDNA, um, evidence of ECDNA in triple negative breast cancer is associated with poor outcome. And we find that these ECDNAs don't just encode oncogenes. About half of the ECDNAs encode oncogenes, but about another half, 25 to 50 percent of these ECDNAs across breast cancer subtypes do not encode oncogenes in this, our unpublished work. Um, instead, they encode immune modulatory genes, which hasn't, we don't think, been described before. What are these immunomodulatory genes? Well, they're shown here, some of them at least. Sorry, this hasn't come out too well in the translation onto PC, but IDO1, CCL13, and HLAG are encoded on these um, um, immune modulatory um, um, ECDNAs. What do they do? Well, they suppress effector T cells and NK cells, but they also polarize tumor associated macrophages to an M2 tumor suppressive, um, immune suppressive, I should say, state. So what else is happening in the um, um, context of chromosomal instability? Well, we also see evidence of parallel evolution. Um, and evolution and order out of chaos of these chromosomal states as cells evolve. So when we look across, across um, um, our cohorts of ER positive, HER2 positive, and triple negative breast cancer, we start to see that natural selection drives order from chaos of these complex chromosomal states. What that means is that we see loss of tumor suppressor genes occurring early on in tumor evolution. For instance, obviously in triple negative breast cancer, we see loss of TP53 as an early event in tumor evolution. Then cells, as I've said, double their genomes. And of course, this makes it much harder to lose tumor suppressor genes. So many of the tumor suppressor genes are lost prior to genome doubling. After genome doubling, you get these branched events that very often involve amplifications of oncogenes that you'll be familiar with, such as cyclin D, cyclin E1, AKT1 as examples. There is one exception to this, and that's HLA loss that commonly occurs as a subclonal event, particularly in triple negative breast cancer in about a third of cases. We see HLA loss is repeatedly lost in the branches after genome doubling. Now we see the evidence of parallel evolution that provides some indication of ongoing selection. I show in a cartoon format here the gain of MYC from the maternal allele in region one of the tumor and the paternal allele in region two of the tumor. In other words, MYC is gained twice independently in two separate tumor subclones in the same tumor as cells evolve. And we see this very frequently in breast tracer X. These are three examples here where, for instance, you can see BRAF gain in these two tumors, once from the maternal allele and once from the paternal allele in separate, separate regions of the same tumor. And the same occurs due to losses as well, beta-2 microglobulin loss in the maternal allele in one region and the paternal allele in the other region. Now, this order, this chaos, I should say, is selected for over time to provide order. And we see this order ensue from the primary subclones through to the metastasis with gains of cyclin D1 and cyclin E in HER2 positive metastasis. 
and AKT1 and HER2, GNAS and ERCC2 in um, ER positive metastasis. We also see chromosomal instability have an impact on proliferation, we think. And this is work from um, um, my colleagues, uh, Simone Zachariah and Olivia Lucas, that have developed this really elegant algorithm called Sprinter. And this enables us to allocate proliferation indices to individual subclones of the tumor. Now, you'll remember from Fraser Simmons's work back in 1995, he alluded to the proliferation heterogeneity in breast cancer, where we can now see this at subclonal resolution by allocating through 42,000 single cell, single cell sequence, we can allocate each single cell to a subclone and then infer its proliferation indices by looking at DNA replication timing. And you can see the really, really um, bewildering degree of heterogeneity in proliferation states of these subclones within an individual patient. When we look at this more closely, we can find that the clonal proliferation rates correlate with a degree of chromosomal instability and this alludes to work we published some years ago now that reflected the fact that chromosomal instability provides diverse um, subclones that allow the selection of gene copy number variants that can encode core regulators of proliferation. And we saw this in ER positive breast cancer. So that proliferation genes are selected as cells evolve due to um, gains of chromosome copy number states during tumor evolution. So finally, in the last minute or two of the talk, I'd like to talk about the impacts of chromosomal instability on immune evasion. And then I'm going to talk a little bit at the end towards um, um, ways in which the cell can adapt to immune predation, the breast cancer cell can adapt to immune predation by suppressing HLA molecules or selecting for alternative splice variants in HLA molecules. So as you all know, the class one HLA presents antigens to the T cell receptor. The class 1 HLA is expressed on tumor cells, presents neoantigens to the T cell receptor, and engages the T cell to um, predate or kill the tumor cell. So is immune predation a problem in breast cancer? Well, it turns out, and, and I know you all know this, but of course it is, and, and it actually I was quite surprised to see that we see about twice um, the frequency of immune hot tumors in early stage triple negative breast cancer compared to lung adenocarcinoma and lung squamous carcinoma. So there are a very significant proportion of triple negative breast cancers that are classified as immune hot, almost twice the uh, proportion relative to lung adenocarcinoma and three, time, and three times relative to lung squamous carcinoma. So there's evidence of considerable um, immune predation in, in triple negative breast cancer. So how does that play out in the context of um, cancer cell evolution? So first of all, we're going to look at the impact of chromosomal instability on the cell's ability to lose HLA class 1, to actually lose the MHC um, um, molecule entirely that binds the neoantigen and presents it to the T cell receptor. We see this very commonly in breast cancer. So about 30% of triple negative breast cancers in the Tracer X cohorts and in TCA, TCGA have lost class 1 HLA. And um, when we can um, infer the subclonal evolutionary states, we find that about a third of those cases have lost class 1 HLA, one or more of the six alleles in the branches in one subclone but not another. Now, this relates to, um, this compares to a similar frequency in lung adenocarcinoma, but nearly um, twice the frequency in lung squamous carcinoma. Perhaps that's not surprising given the fact the mutational burden in lung squamous carcinoma is about five to tenfold greater than triple negative breast cancer. So we were intrigued by the loss of HLA in breast cancer. And so then we investigated RNA signals of HLA expression and alternative splicing um, in breast cancer. Now, at the moment, we can only do this in ER positive disease because we need to compare these signals in tumor to normal tissue comparators. And we've only got significant numbers of patients with normal tissues from ER positive disease, but this is work in progress. So first of all, we're going to look at HLA transcriptional repression in our ER positive breast cancers compared to normal tissue. And we were surprised to see that 45% of ER positive breast cancers, these are early stage ER positive breast cancers, have HLA transcriptional repression or HLA and or HLA loss of heterozygosity compared to um, 
about 75% or over 90% of uh, lung adenocarcinomas and squamous carcinomas respectively. And that shouldn't be too surprising given that the, the uh, number of non-synonymous mutations per megabase is about five to tenfold greater in lung adenocarcinoma com uh, compared to ER-positive breast cancer. But still, a significant minority of breast cancers have disrupted HLA either through chromosomal instability and copy number loss or through transcriptional repression of the class one locus. So lastly, we looked at alternative splicing in new unpublished data using this tool that Claire Puttick has developed. So what do we know about the HLA locus um, and it, the exon, exonic components? Well, it's composed of seven exons. Um, exons um, um, one, two, three, and four make up the peptide binding groove. Exon five makes up the transmembrane domain that lodges the HLA molecule into the cancer cell membrane and keeps it there and allows it to be presented to the T cell receptor. And exon six and seven are the cytoplasmic um, tails. And what we find in ER-positive breast cancer is about nearly 10% of early-stage ER-positive breast cancers have alternative splicing and have lost either exons two, three, or four that disables their ability to present the peptide binding groove to cancer cells, presumably as a mechanism of immune evasion. It can no longer present the uh, antigens to T cells because it's lost the peptide binding groove of the HLA in ER positive breast cancer. And we see a similar frequency in lung adeno and lung squamous carcinoma. But even more intriguingly, and perhaps worryingly, is the fact that um, 15 to 20% of ER positive breast cancers harbor exon 5 skipping of class 1 HLA, which would disable the ability of the class 1 molecule, we think, to, to bind and, and um, be secured in the cancer cell membrane. And it was shown back in the early 2000s that soluble HLA class 1 induces NK cell apoptosis or CD8 T cell apoptosis as a result of loss of exon 5. So to summarize my talk and what we're learning from Breast Cancer Tracer X in collaboration with our colleagues uh, Fabrice and Monica and Christoph, is that clonal T53 mutation is an early event in tumor evolution, as we know, in triple negative breast cancer. This permits chromosomal instability to ensue. And chromosomal instability itself is driven by HR deficiency, by APOBEC, um, cytidine deaminase activation, DNA replication stress, and whole genome doubling, amongst others, as well as ECDNA evolution that can also be driven by these processes. As a result of this propagation of chromosomal instability that results from these different processes in the triple negative breast cancer cell, Diversity ensues, natural selection acts that results in increased proliferation and diversity of proliferation indices across triple negative breast cancer subclones. Parallel evolution of events that are manifested as selection in metastasis and immune evasion events that I've alluded to that include HLA loss of heterozygosity and ECDNA driven immune suppression. So as a result of that, I'd just like to thank you all for inviting me, the BCRF that have funded me for the last 10 years and have enabled this work to ensue, all my collaborators in the UK and France and the Breast Tracer X Consortium, who I've tried to name throughout this presentation, and colleagues in the UK and the Francis Crick Institute, particularly Nana Kanu, um, who've made all this work possible. Thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Swanton, I think, uh, for this most elegant molecular detective work. I think Francis Crick is probably very proud of this. So we'll move to the next session. Uh,